Welcome to the chapter on digoxin dosing and drug concentration predictions. Digitalis compounds have been used since the 18th century to treat cardiac conditions, with digoxin available since the 1930s. The monitoring of digoxin presents some challenges due to the long distribution phase, where concentrations may be very high but are not reflective of clinical effect. Digoxin's multi-compartment distribution can take up to six hours to complete, so concentration monitoring shouldn't occur before that time. Dosing adjustment with digoxin is fairly straightforward if based on concentrations that represent steady-state conditions in a patient taking the medication as scheduled. There are important differences in bioavailability between IV dosing and oral dosing with tablets that should be considered in a patient who is on the IV product for a long period of time. In this video, we will estimate concentrations based on an administered dosing schedule after considering patient weight and renal function, and we'll examine the impact of a drug-drug interaction on estimated average steady-state concentrations. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's begin by looking at the concentration at any time T after an IV bolus dose for a drug demonstrating multi-compartment distribution such as digoxin. The best way to visualize that is to plot it on a log of concentration versus time plot because that demonstrates the multi-compartment nature of the drug best. So here's an example as if we give an IV bolus, it builds up and then goes down and the concentrations can be as high as 10 after the bolus and then rapidly can go down to anywhere from 1 to 2. This is the distribution plus elimination portion of the curve where you can see on a drug that shows multi-compartment distribution as dramatically as digoxin it creates a clear break and this occurs over about a four to six hour time period. Then you get to the portion of the curve that is elimination only after distribution is complete and there's equilibrium going in and out of the compartments. The important part to note with digoxin is that the effect curve looks like this. So you can see that these higher concentrations early on really don't impact the effect of the drug very much until distribution is complete. Let's solve a case now related to digoxin dosing. We have a 60-year-old male patient who weighs 100 kilograms and, who, and whose ideal body weight is 80 kilograms. Our patient has an estimated creatinine clearance of 70 milliliters per minute and is going to be given digoxin for the treatment of heart failure. What we'd like to do is predict the digoxin steady state average concentration if the patient is given 0.25 milligram tablets daily. We start by getting some pharmacokinetic parameters and one way to do this is to search the literature for population predictors. Here's a predictor that says the clearance of digoxin in milliliters per minute equals 1.303 times the creatinine clearance, which is also in milliliters per minute, plus 20 milliliters per minute. This latter part of the curve is the non-renal elimination of digoxin. When we plug in our value for creatinine clearance, which is 70 milliliters per minute for our patient, and solve the problem, we end up with a digoxin clearance of 111.21 milliliters per minute. Now importantly, we need to convert this to liters per hour to be able to use it to solve for the rest of our pharmacokinetic parameters. So we multiply times 0.06, which represents 60 minutes over one hour times one liter over 1,000 milliliters to convert to liters per hour and the clearance of digoxin in liters per hour is 6.673. Now let's do the calculations. To predict average steady state concentration, we use this formula. And if we plug in the values 
you'll see we're giving a dose of 250 micrograms. I converted it from milligrams to micrograms because we want to end up with a concentration of micrograms per liter. And we use an F of 0.6. The reason we use 0.6 is that the authors of the method that created the population predictor assumed that bioavailability of the tablets was 0.6. Thus, we must use the same value that they use to come up to effectively utilize their population predictor. The clearance that we predicted was 6.673 liters per hour, and we're giving the dosing over 24 hours. Again, daily dosing converted to 24 hours because our units for clearance are in liters per hour. This gives us a predicted CSS average of 0.94 micrograms per liter. So let's look at that pictorially. Here's what a concentration time curve might look like for a drug requiring absorption. The steady state average concentration is roughly about halfway between the dosing interval and about half of the difference between the peak and the trough. And we predicted it to be 0.94 micrograms per liter. Let's continue the case by adding quinidine to the patient's regimen. There's a drug-drug interaction between quinidine and digoxin and the clearance adjustment factor for the interaction averages 0.56. So what we want to do now is predict the impact of the addition of quinidine to the CSS average based on that interaction uh, adjustment factor. So let's go back and do the calculations. Again, the, cons the uh, formula for average steady state concentration is this. We plug in our values, again still 0.6 for F, our dose is 250 micrograms, and we're going to alter our clearance by multiplying it times the clearance adjustment factor of 0.56. When we do the calculations, the CSS average has now increased to 1.67 micrograms per liter. There's another way to do this, and in that case we determine the new steady state concentration by dividing the current steady state concentration by the clearance factor. So 0.94 micrograms per liter was the initial predicted concentration divided by the clearance adjustment factor of 0.56 equals 1.67 micrograms per liter. So our concentration will have gone up from 0.94 to 1.67 based on the drug interaction. Let's examine the impact of the drug-drug interaction on, every, on average steady state concentration using graphs. So this is what it might have looked like if we were giving the, the dose by itself without quinidine. And then if we add quinidine, the concentration increases to 1.67 at average steady state. There may be an alteration in volume, half-life, or both, but certainly the clearance is reduced.